Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you. And today we're going to be putting together an all AMD based system because I think it would be quite interesting to find out what the performance is going to be like when we take the budget gaming CPU that everyone seems to want to uh, get their hands on at the moment, which is the 9800X3D. It's the lowest end X3D processor that AMD offer at the moment. So it seems a good opportunity to take that processor, team it up with the AMD Radeon RX 9070, and this is in the Asus Prime Overclock flavor. Um, so we're gonna team those two together. Now, what we're going to be doing is putting them in an Asus ProArt case. It's actually a funky little case. I'm probably gonna end up, it's the uh, PA401, by the way. It's still fairly new. I haven't done a full review on it, but after I've built in this, I actually feel like I really want to. There's lovely little clips everywhere for the uh, door panels. Um, it's got an override switch for the fan, so you can literally have it on connected to the motherboard. Uh, but then there's just a button on the top that you can flick and it puts it on high speed mode, which is a really lovely touch. There's cable routing grommets everywhere. It actually genuinely does, even though it's quite compact, deliver quite a lot to the table for us to be able to work with. Now for all of this, with the um, uh, um, graphics card and the CPU, I'm gonna say you're going to want a good quality, uh, 750 to 850 watt power supply, just to be able to balance out the fact that then when you're gaming, it's gonna sit in this kind of sweet spot around 50%, which will keep your bills down. So you pay a little bit more for your power supply, but then you'll be able to keep your electricity bills down later on with the higher efficiency. Something like a gold is probably where I would go and sit as a baseline, but obviously it's always gonna depend on your budget. A lot of the Asus Pro, uh, um, power supplies do come in and out of stock really fast. So it's gonna depend on what you can get your hands on uh, at that present moment in time. But then once we've got the everything else in, we're gonna to have to start thinking about cooling. So I ended up using the Prime LC240 cooler. This actually has interchangeable tops so that you can change the design of the cooler. It is ARGB as well. You can connect it all through your motherboard. It keeps things nice and simple. And as you'll see later on, the cooling is on point as well. Once we've done all that though, we do need to start thinking about uh, memory and solid state drives. And I've come across a, a new company called Bywin. Now they're new, they're not new to the memory market, but uh, they have been uh, licensing their products into uh, loads of other big brands, sort of like Lenovo and um, loads of other big people like that. Now they've got a full stack of products, but what we've got here for us to take a look at today, which are available on uh, Amazon at the moment, but they're hoping to have them in UK retailers in the not too distant future. But we've got the NV7400, which is the PCI Gen 4 drive. I'm gonna be using that as my uh, game boot drive. Then I've got the X570 Pro, which is the PCI Gen 5 drive that I'm going to be using as my boot drive. And then I've got some DW100, which is 6400 megahertz that I'm going to be using uh, as my memory. Now, one of the things you do need to remember to do, and this goes for everyone out there, is if you've built your system, the first thing that you should really be doing is going into the BIOS and enabling uh, XMP or uh, the AMD variant of it, so that you can go in there, just make that little tweak. Now you've got the um, uh, basic version available and then you can also do it in the advanced version of the BIOS, just go in there, enable it, hit F10 and save, and then you're going to know that your memory is running at rated. If you don't do that, especially with these kits, it's going to be running sort of around the, well, it'll just, it's not gonna be running very fast at all. It'll be 4,800 megahertz. And if you port, uh, paid out for a 56, 6,000 or 6,400 kit, it's just wasted. So I hate to say it because it's very clickbaity, but it is free performance because if you don't enable it, it won't be working at rated. In the BIOS, AMD Expo or XMP, depends on what your board is going to call it, depending on the brand, and it can still say both, even if it's an AMD board, it can still say XMP, but it is technically AMD Expo that you need to enable, and then uh, that will just kick your memory up to the full performance. 
Also, please check the link underneath the video because you can receive up to a £100 Games Planet voucher with the purchase of selected Asus products that I have used in this video and many others. Now we've tested uh, several games and you can click over to the OC3D website to go and take a deeper look. This is the critical point. Um, you can go have a look at more of the data, the temperatures and all of that sort of stuff. But the star of attraction at the moment is FSR4. Now with FSR4, it does need FSR3 or 3.1 to be enabled in the game before you can go into the actual settings of the software to enable it so that you get that extra FSR kick up. Now uh, we can show you just uh, the normal sort of gameplay rate that you'd be getting um, in Horizon at 4K now. And then when we slide it in, this is the kick, this is the boost that you're gonna be getting with FSR4. It's a huge uplift that you're going to get. It's a very healthy uplift and I really do genuinely hope that AMD do get this implemented in more popular titles moving forward because this is going to be paramount for them really taking hold of the market with both hands and grabbing hold of both of the balls. But the thing is, is even with games out there that don't necessarily have FSR 3 um, support, which means you can't then turn it up to FSR 4, it sounds like it's going to be a bad thing and it's really not. So with F1 2022, for example, you can have uh, FSR um, enabled. So we'll bring the 4K result up. So this is it running in 4K without any um, FSR enabled. And then when we slide in the FSR boost, and this is FSR 2.1, you can still see that there is a huge uplift in frames, and this is without any frame generation. There are several games out there that do still have FSR 3 and then uh, FSR Three frame gen uh, enabled that you can uh, go and look at. Dying Light that we've done, for example, does support that. Um, and you can see that there is a huge difference there. And this is one of the reasons why I, do, I really do encourage AMD to get this or to get more developers to use this. But with the amount of graphics cards that have been sold recently, I'm going to assume that de developers are really going to be sat up looking to see whether this is something they really need to be spending more time on. And I genuinely think they should do. Now, when it came to temperatures, genuinely, the graphics card and the uh, CPU didn't really get hot at all in just the gaming run. Uh, you, with the hotspot, you can get the hotspot um, uh, fairly warm and the memory temperatures can start to creep but they don't get hot and the graphics card doesn't uh, suffer from it at all either and you can see in the graph that it does genuinely look uh, it does perform really really well and I think despite the fact that it has gone to sleep because it's been sat on the desk for a little while I think you'll see that the uh, rig itself does really look the part as well and this was one of the things I was very surprised by the fact that uh, despite the case being so compact, it's swallowed the um, hardware. Now I think the graphics card is about 310 millimeters and that's about the limit for the case. This Prime is the, um, the, about the only one from the 9017 and 90XT range that will actually squeeze itself in there. But it has performed really well. It's being fed from that front fan, which obviously is going to be helping with the temperatures. Um, but it is a compact case, and I think that's meant to be the point, is it's not meant to be a huge gaming case. It keeps things quite small and compact, and the performance is on point. Temperatures were great. It wasn't loud. It ticked a lot of boxes. Don't forget what I said, though. You can go and have a look at the OC3D website so that you can go and have a look at more of the performance and all of that sort of stuff. But it has performed admirably. And the 9800X3D coupled with that 9070, I think is a very smart place for you to be spending your money on. Keeping prices down with something like the Tough and the B850 is obviously going to help you loads as well. And Bywin are very aggressive on their pricing with the SSDs and memories if you wanted to uh, look at them as a possibility to uh, add into your system as well. Please let me know what you thought about the video because I don't do these sort of things very often. But for now at least, this has been the tiniest one with another video for you. Out. Ding!